Um, Munrahil Youssef here for today's session. I'll be handing the mic to you. So feel free to start whenever you Hi, my name is Munira Youssef. So I'm gonna start about a little bit of background about myself. I was born in Virginia. Um, I went to undergrad at Virginia Tech, that's in Blacksburg, Virginia. And then um, I graduated in 2020. And then I went straight into dental school. So that's, um, and in undergrad, I majored in human nutrition, foods and exercise. And I'll get into a little bit about why um, I didn't major in biology, which I get a lot of questions about. Um, so I know like the typical route is majoring in biology, but for me, I um, I wanted to do like major in something I was a little bit more passionate about. And um, I took the science route of human nutrition and exercise. And um, it aligned with a lot of the prerequisites you need to get into dental school. So for anyone wondering if they should like if they should take a different route other than biology, you can still take the prerequisites. You can still still take those upper um, level biology courses and major in something else. Maybe you feel more aligned with and still get into dental school. So the next topic I want to talk about is DAT advice. So even though I didn't major in biology, I felt like I was still really prepared for the dental exam because a huge chunk of it, especially in the biology section, is anatomy. And for my major, anatomy was actually a requirement. And yes, it was a pretty rigorous course, but it prepared me so much for the DAT, which is one key advice I would give to a lot of people. If you can take anatomy, or um, you're debating on it, it will definitely be a huge help when you get into dental school and when you're taking the dental exam. But when you're starting to st um, study for the DAT, my number one advice is to kind of isolate yourself, not from everyone and to, you know, like get into, don't get into a bad mental space, but definitely you have to step back for a second and be very focused. So like I personally took off for uh, two months and I tried to focus on the DAT efforts. I was working, I was um, taking a class, studying for the DAT and applying to dental school. And I realized that was way too much on my plate. So I had to basically kind of like finish my class and try to like um, get that done so that and I did end up taking off from my job for that summer and um, started focusing, studying on my DAT and applying for dental school. And you can apply to dental school, mind you, before you submit your DAT scores, that is a possibility. You just have to, um, they just won't, will not start looking at your application until you're done your, your dental exam. But back on to actually studying for the DAT. Um, I had a schedule, like I did um, DAT Bootcamp and DAT Destroyer. So DAT Bootcamp already comes with a pre-made schedule that was very helpful. And I used that and then I modified it into what I felt best fit my schedule. So after I did that and I've gone through everything and I started taking practice questions, I saw where my weaknesses were and where my strengths were. And if I felt like I was falling behind in a certain subject because I was a little bit weaker there, I would actually take one whole day and maybe focus on that and try to figure out where my weaknesses are in that. And that truly helped me a lot because then I could catch up basically with all the other subjects. And um, I just like followed that schedule and made flashcards, figured out what worked for me. And I just kept going at it. And practice questions are going to be your best friend. They're going to be a great indicator on how much you actually know. So, and don't feel discouraged, honestly, even when you um, go through your first round and you actually get the basic knowledge and then you start going into practice questions, you kind of feel discouraged because you feel like it is really hard, especially DAT Destroyer. It's like meant to be very hard. So it kind of can be dis discouraging. But I think you have to remember, it's like, okay, like this is my first round looking at it. And as you keep looking at it, it just becomes easier and easier. Like everyone goes through that feeling of like this discouraged and like you feel like, oh, maybe I'm not good enough for this. Like it's, it's okay to feel that. And you have to recognize that we'll all feel that sometimes. And you just have to, you just have to say, okay, like at the end of the day, all I can do is study and study, pray about it, do the best to 
to my ability of what I can. And then the rest is not up to you. Like it's, it's out of your control at that point. You just do the best you can. And what happens, I feel like that was what was meant to happen for you. And so then that's how I kept my mental health throughout studying for the DAT um, throughout the entire process. And you just have to know where your weaknesses and strengths are and play, play to that, know where you have to put more energy in. And even when you're done, if you allocate, okay, two months to studying for this exam, and then by the end of the two months, you're like, I truly do not feel ready. I think I need more time. It's okay to, um, you know, change your DAT date and take it when you are ready. So that was like, I think I um, moved my DAT two weeks back. And because I was like, I don't feel ready. And I want to, and I know everyone will not feel ready even when the day comes, but there's um there's a, I don't feel ready just because you're nervous. And there's, a, I don't feel ready because I'm genuinely not ready. And like, you just have to know like the difference, you know, like know yourself. So that is the advice I would give for a DAT and staying motivated while you're studying for the DAT or even in dental school, like how do you like stay motivated? For me personally, I'm a very spiritual person. I'm religious. So a lot of like the way I stay sane is by praying. And that's how I stay motivated too, because you feel discouraged when you think you can't do it. And like, that just takes away your whole motivation. But if you get into the mindset that once you do the best you can, and you truly believe yourself, there's nothing more you can do. And if a, if you get a certain outcome that you didn't like, I feel like that, that was meant to happen. Maybe it was for, it's a lesson to you, or it's a way to motivate you to um, try again. It's a way to encourage you or be your backbone the next time around. I feel like everything does happen for a reason as long as you're doing your part. So that always keeps me motivated. And I know like in every step of my life, there was a point where I thought, oh, like I can't do it or it's so hard or like, and then I did it. And it's like, I look back in every milestone in my life, you know, like you kind of question yourself and you feel scared and you feel nervous. And there's a point where don't feel motivated and you're just like oh like I feel like not being motivated comes from like feeling like you're gonna fail and you just kind of want to give up so once you kind of remember it's like oh I felt that before and guess what I did it like I, I made it so it's just like I just have to go through that feeling again and like take myself out of it like you have sometimes you have to sit down and be like why am I why am I thinking like this like will this really will this really change my situation if I sit here and stress or I feel unmotivated? Like that exam is not going away or that, um, you know, that obstacle is not going away. So instead of me sitting there and stressing about it, I'm like, I'm gonna choose like action over like just sitting here and like dwelling on what I need to do or like, I can't do it. It's like, I feel like at the end of the day, you just have to um, get into a mindset that you actually wanna be in and when you feel low, like remind yourself of that mindset each time. And it's just like, okay, like this is this is the person I wanna be. This is the person I wanna think like and continuously remind yourself of that. So, and on top of that, staying motivated, I think is um, along with caring for your mental health. Like if you are solely like morning to night, just in the books, you will start to get overwhelmed and you're not taking care of yourself at that point. And then like your mental health can just, go downhill and then that can cause problems like you're not motivated anxiety you know all that so I think it's important to you know even like eat healthy like go to the gym find something that um that you find fun you know that like releases your stress and that will help a lot with um like not feeling motivated um so and then now I want to get into um the things I did you know even to get into dental school um, one thing I want to focus on is community service. Like I did community service, you know, before I got into dental school. And on top of that, while I'm in dental school, my school um, prioritizes the community. So a huge part aspect of my school is community service. So um, when I was in undergrad, I would um, we would have like a town cleanup, and it would called, be called the big event, and everyone would um, clean, you know, the college town because it's like a way to thank the people who actually live there for allowing college students to be in the area. And it's just like, it's just a way to show gratitude. And that was one community service I did. Also, um, I would uh, go to a school and actually mentor children after school. 
And that, that one I actually really enjoyed. Like I love kids and it was really nice to, you know, just like be there for them, um, help them with schoolwork, um, just be there, to, you know, play with them if they need, like after they were done their schoolwork. That was really nice. And now in dental school, um, we do food drives and um, that's like a huge aspect. Actually, I go, the dental school I go to is Meharry Dental School and um, that is in Nashville. And we do a lot of food drives, which I really like. We've also um, cleaned houses for um, foster kids, um, you know, at their homes, we came together and we um, helped clean their yard um, their backyard, you know, mow the lawn, like, you know, do some service for them, you know, to show some gratitude. And those are some examples of community service I did. And it's really nice. Like, it's not just about like, you know, putting it on paper. Like, I feel like you actually enjoy it. You know, with you go with other people who also um, really want to do good for the community and give back. You know, it's not at the end of the day, it's not all about us. We're going to leave this world one day. And it's like, it's really nice to know that you did something to impact it. Um, and like, there's other ways, you know, to impact other than, we, yeah, we're getting into the med field, the dental field, and like, we are gonna, you know, impact people in that way. But there's also so many ways outside of that to, um, you know, help the community. And it's really nice, I feel like for all of us to just like, you know, do that for other people. The next topic I wanted to get into was choosing a dental school. So actually, like I, since I just talked about community service, I really loved the community aspect of my school. It's very centered around helping um, like certain communities and just like being there, you know, being a place where people can come, helping low income communities, helping people who are less advantaged. And I think that's really important. That was something I was looking for in a school. And I specifically heard about Meharry when I went to an ASDA conference, which I highly recommend anyone to get involved in. If your pre-dental club doesn't have an ASDA chapter, I think I should consider talking to them about it and um, getting involved with ASDA. I am the pre-dental chair in the ASDA sub, sub exec board at Meharry. And we're really trying to work on getting more pre-dental students involved with ASDA, which is a great way to open yourselves up to many different dental schools, talk to dental students. And yeah, that's actually how I got to know about Meharry Dental School. I went to an ASDA conference, a D4 ASDA conference, and I met some um, Meharry Dental students. And when I was younger, you know, I didn't know every single dental school, especially ones um, far away from home. So when they told me about the dental school and I could see how happy they were and how much they actually love the education they were receiving, the people who were there, the family aspect, the way like the environment was. I was like, this is definitely a school I would wanna to apply to just off of talking to the dental students. And when I was applying to schools, I only chose schools that I could actually see myself going to. I didn't just apply like just to every random school, but I applied to a good amount of schools, but I made sure that they were all schools I could see myself in if that's where I ended up going. And Meharry was definitely a place I could see myself going to. I just love the people. I love the way they, they describe the faculty, the environment, the way they cater their dental students to be great dentists and not just great dentists, but great people, you know, to care for um, your brother and sister and to care for like even strangers to make sure everybody's okay, everybody's good and like to be that helping hand. And I really like that because I feel like choosing a dental school is not just about how well they can cater you into dentists, but how well they can cater you into a great person because the people you surround yourself with have a huge impact of, in who you are as a person. So I think it's important to look at both aspects. How can you grow as a person? And how can you grow as a dentist? So um, specific, other than that, specifically um, why I also liked Meharry is I love that it was in HBCU and historic, historically black um, um, university. And I don't know if anyone else is looking into that, but it's very, it's diverse and it's really nice to see that and um, to get involved in that type of community. And if anyone else was considering that, that was um, something I looked into as well. I really enjoyed that. So a typical day in dental school, that is what I will be talking about next. A typical day in dental school. So I actually started dental school um, 
once Corona started. So I started online, which was very different than a lot of people, of course. So I can't say I got the full experience, but we did um, go in person for a DAO. You know, we started waxing up molars um, our, um, in our central incisors and our premolars. So we got the chance to do that, which was very nice with understanding the detailing of two teeth. So that was one thing we did in person and we also did operative in person. So we started learning how to prep a cavity. And those are, I feel like the main things that we were doing with our hands, but most of first year and second year, you will also be in the books when you're not in lab. So I feel like that was majority of my first year, you know, taking anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, those classes. So I'll, I'll give a day in the life on when I was strictly on Zoom. So, you know, we would wake up at 7 a.m. I would make my breakfast and, you know, try to get myself focused for the day if I needed to take um, something to keep me focused, coffee, anything. I would do that if, if it was like my smoothie that was keeping me focused. I would do that. I would take that, be, you know, well focused, go into the living room and um, open my laptop and I would start taking notes, you know, for each one of my classes. We would have lunch from 12 to one. Sometimes during lunch, I would go to the gym and then come back in time for our class to start again. And then we would continue up until 5 p.m. And then after 5 p.m., I would start um, looking over my notes and studying for each class. And depending on if we had an exam coming up or not, then that would determine how late I was um, staying up. But I would try to get through um, at least two subjects a day so I wasn't falling behind in my courses. And sometimes you will fall behind. You know, not every day you will um, have that motivation to, or or you'll just be burnt out certain days and that's okay. Like the next day you would just pick up from where you left off and, you know, keep on going. But the last month when we weren't on Zoom, we actually were um, in person from eight to five on Tuesdays and Thursdays and then from 10 to 12 on Monday and Wednesdays. So on those days, we would, it was actually a huge change being in person and I truly enjoyed it. I felt like I was learning even more, just being able to see the professor and being able to be hands-on. And it was uh, definitely a huge hop from being online to going from eight to five. It's like you can feel the toll on your body for sure. But as I got used to it, I truly did love it. Like, do you know, just being around your classmates, um, you feel like you're learning more. You get to interact with the professor. Um, and just being able to watch the professor, it was a great experience. So when we would go in at eight, we would um, start lecture. So then we would start lecture, we would go through our PowerPoints, you know, learn the book work of what we were getting into. And then we would go to lunch. We had, we go to Cal, which is um, the dining hall for us. So we would go um, get our food, get your Starbucks from there if you wanted, you know, eat your lunch. And then we would go back to class. And then we would, um, most times after lunch, we would start on our hand skills. And then that's when we were focusing on prepping a cavity um, this semester. So that's what we were that's what we were doing. And almost every class we would have a quiz or an exam. And that honestly kept us on our toes. So every time after you would go home at five o'clock, we would just um, start studying and focus on, you know, what the exam is gonna be on, what the quiz is gonna be on. And that was the number one way we kept on top of our work. Every day we were prepared and I can say, I learned so much from that class. And I realized just being in person, honestly, it sucks having quizzes every day, but it will keep you on your toes. There's no feeling lazy or honestly burnt out. You have to like stay on top of it. And I think it makes you a better student, honestly, at the end of the day, because when you're done with it, you realize you just, you just kept up with it the entire way through. Like you never fell behind because you always had to be you know, on your toes, like you always had to know, you like you just sometimes you didn't even know what was coming next, what the quiz was gonna be on. You had to, you had to make sure you were, you knew everything that was taught, like thus far. So I feel like that kind of went through a typical day. Um, it was kind of different, and I feel like I can't explain it more because it was Corona. You know, everything's changed. We we're just trying to 
make sure we were kept up to date and still getting a good education, even though majority of it was online. So I feel like I would get a better, I would be able to give you guys a better idea of what a typical day in dental school is when we're fully in person and, you know, we're not trying to play catch up or, you know, but so far it's very nice. And I think being in person is better than online. And yes, it can get tiring from eight to five, but you learn a lot more being in class. You're more focused, you're more attentive and um, you, you can't slack off. You just, you're taking your notes and then you go into the hand schools of what you just learned. And you know, the teachers are there to help you and aid you. Your classmates are there to be your backbone if you need help. You know, everyone is your support system. So that is typically like a day in the life of a dental student at Meharry Dental School. And yeah, and I got into how I chose the school, um, how I chose Meharry and it was confirmed when I did, when I was even online and in person, I really love the faculty. I feel like I'm truly learning. Like I understand what I'm doing. It's not, I feel like I'm not walking blind. It's like everyone's just there to help you. The faculty is teaching it and presenting it very well. And I I feel like I made the right choice. And from what I've heard from even other people telling me about the school when I was making a decision on where to go, that is exactly what they presented the school to be and it posed to be true. So yeah, talk to people when you are choosing dental schools, ask them what a day in life is, ask them their their way of teaching, if they're more research-based, if they're more hands-on, if they're more book work, like every dental school is different. So you wanna choose the one that caters to how you wanna, um, you know, go about your education. So that is one that I wanted to go over. And if there's any questions, I'll be here to answer them. Hi, thank you so, so much. We learned a lot about your dental school. So we have a couple other questions, if that's all right. Okay. So uh, what's the class size uh, and lab size to your school or in your class? Class size is 62 students. As of right now, right now there's 62 students. So when it's very, huh? I'm like, when do clinics start? Like D3 or what year do you start? Working D3 with start clinics. Okay, so you guys haven't started with any actual patients now? No, we have not, especially with a corona right now. We have not started with any patients. Like right now, we're just in the lab. And the D2s are also in the lab. Like you will fully be with like patients by D3 year. Perfect. What uh, was the easiest and hardest class uh, so far that you have taken? The hardest class, hands down, is anatomy. Mm -hmm. Like that class, even though I already took it in undergrad, it's a whole another ball game when you get into grad school. That class is going to take up 100% of your time. And it really tested my mental health. Like I'm gonna be raw about this. It really tested my mental health. And I like to say, I'm a very, I'm able, I used to think I was very able to, you know, to control my emotions, but this class will really test your patience. It will test the way you think. It will, it will test everything. And I would 100% say that is the hardest class and it's important to keep a good support system have, you know, have study groups, have people with you who understand, you know, talk to people. But that class was, that was crazy. <laughs> I, was, I still have nightmares about that class, but it's okay. Cause I feel like at the end of the day, I made it through and I actually got the grade I wanted. And it was just like, it takes a lot of hard work and just like, you have to be able to sacrifice time with that class. Cause it's like, I feel like the whole way through, it didn't really get easier. It just, you just understood how to manage it and you understood how to study it. And one key advice I'll give for anyone when they start anatomy is draw out the pictures. Like when I was just writing my notes, I feel like I wasn't getting a visual, but when I started drawing out the body and I started understanding where everything was through a drawing, it started sticking in my brain a lot quicker. So I feel like once I understood that trick, it started getting better and better because I, I was like, okay, this is how I learn. This is what's making it easier. But yeah, that was definitely the hardest class. And the easiest class out of the sciences, I want to say, I want to say it was biochemistry for me. 
but that's a personal opinion just because um when I took biochem like it coincided with the biochem I took in undergrad and the metabolic nutrition I took because I major in human nutrition foods and exercise it actually coincided with a lot of the things I learned in metabolic nutrition which actually was a very very rigorous course in my undergrad so me studying so hard for that in undergrad you know I remembered a lot of the concepts and pathways and it helped me a lot in biochemistry and I had a very good professor at Meharry with biochemistry. So they were very adamant about making sure we knew exactly what we needed to focus on and where our energy needed to lie, you know, and how we can best, um, you know, study for the course. So I feel like that helped a lot in making that one of the more manageable courses that I have taken. Perfect. Uh, Another question is how do you balance your work and life in school right now or like how do you manage your school and personal life so how I do that is I like on the weekdays of course I'm making sure like I study and um but I also I do make time one thing I do make time for is the gym so I would say how I manage that is like I realize like there's a lot of time we spend on our phone. And I think if you understand how much time you're actually spending on your phone and you can take that out, you can actually add other things into your life. So the day, like, you know, instead of like me sitting maybe on TikTok or something for an hour and say, oh yeah, you know, that's the mental break I need right now before I start studying. Instead of doing that, I personally will go to the gym so that I can use that time for something, you know, I want to do, and then I'll start studying. So that's how, like, I kind of add in things I want for my personal life. And on the weekends, it's really hard to study from literally, like, maybe 6 a.m. to, like, 11 p.m. at night. You will get burnt out, and at a certain point, your brain is not even thinking anymore. So I think it's important to allocate certain time for studying and allocate certain time for yourself so because either way sometimes your brain is burnt out and it's like it's not even retaining the information so you might as well do something to take your mind off of it and you don't get a little break so I think if you like when you wake up early you have more time in the day of course so if you wake up early you can get a lot of your studies done earlier in the day and um, have the rest of the day to actually do the things you want. Maybe run the errands you want, hang out with the friends you want, go on, you know, that little trip you want to do. And I think if you know, maybe like, if you want to go on a little trip over the weekend and you're like, oh, I have things to do, maybe sacrifice some time or honestly sleep early on certain days and you just get all that stuff done so that you can um, do something for yourself. So I think it's just important to know how much time you need to allocate to a certain subject. And maybe you need to sacrifice some sleeping time or maybe if you need to sacrifice gym time or something and use that, you know, just like, I think just uh, know where to put your, like, like know how much time you need to study. And maybe you have to sacrifice something for that so that you can do something else. But yeah, I think that's how I like, I pretty much manage it. And if I know I'm super busy or I have an exam coming up, that's just the week I'll choose not to, um, you know, hang out with friends or something. And then I'll have maybe one of the one weekend out of the month that I'm like, okay, this is a free weekend. I'm going to use this for myself and like use that as that like mental breather or to do something that you wanted to do. But I think there's definitely a way to manage a social life and being in dental school, like 100%. Like I still had a really good social life and I was still prioritizing my schoolwork. You just have to honestly like use all the hours in the day that you can like wake up early like maybe if you wanted to go on that hike or you wanted to you know hit, go to breakfast with your friends you can still do that and then after you guys all go to the library and study and go to a quiet room like this is number one tip I feel like if you go to the library and you know you're lollygagging or you go with people you know you're going to chat with you're going to take a lot longer and then you are gonna have less time for yourself or you know to do other things you want to like do to enjoy yourself so Like me personally, sometimes I know I'm like, okay, I want to get this done in three hours. I know I need to go into like this quiet room by myself and just hone in like and focus on that. And then I can get it done really quickly and then still have time to enjoy myself and, you know, do the thing I want to do for the rest of the day. But at the end of the day, you can 100% manage. Like I still had a great time my first year. I met a lot of new people. I still went to events. 
you know, went on trips, hung out with my friends, and I still was able to manage my schoolwork and really focus on my schoolwork. I just like, I just knew the, maybe the month of, I was like, oh, April's really busy. This is the month I'm not gonna hang out with my friends. Oh, but this next month I can, like I can do more things here. So it's just like, you know, organize your schedule so that you can prioritize school and prioritize yourself. Perfect, thank you. Another, one of the last questions is, is there something uh, you wish you'd done differently when you started dental school? Something I wish I'd done differently. So I guess this pertains to my studies. There were some days that, especially with Zoom, it was very hard to focus. And like, this could also pertain to someone who's in class. You know, you maybe you're tired or it's very hard to focus and um, you don't necessarily maybe take notes in the moment while the professor's teaching. And I wish I did that for every class sometimes because when I didn't take the notes when exactly when the professor was teaching, I would have to go back and rewatch the lecture or spend a lot more time trying to learn that material because I wasn't completely focused. And I think that definitely took a lot more time than it needed to, you know? So like in the moment, if I just took those notes or like really focused or drank that coffee, you know, just to get my, you know, just to get away the tiredness, when I was actually studying for the subject again, it would go a lot smoother and I would finish a lot quicker because I've already had that first glance and it was a good first glance. So I think that's one thing I wish I did better. Like I still ended up getting my work done, but I think it could have saved a lot of time if I, you know, uh, you know, just had that focus a little bit better with certain classes that maybe, you know, there's some classes the professor does have you on to fall asleep or maybe you don't necessarily even like their teaching style, but if you really pay attention, they are talking about exactly what you need to know. So I think you just have to like, you know, drink that coffee or drink something that keeps you focused or, you know, make sure you're eating your breakfast. You know, there's, I think it's just like, it's more of a time management thing. I wanted to make sure I was using all my time efficiently. So it was just using more time at the end of the day when I could have just focused in the moment. So yeah, that's one thing I would definitely like have to change if I can go back. Perfect. And the last question is, can you tell us more about ASDA for the guests that don't know what that is? Yes, ASDA is the American Student Dental Association. So um, that is an organization that is like, it's like a national chapter and they have conferences and there are a bunch of actual dentists who come in to those, to those conferences and they speak, they speak about their experiences. They speak about if they did a different type of practice. Like um, one person I did met me, they did Botox at their office and they did dentistry. And that was something they enjoyed. And it was something so different to me. And I was like, wow, I learned, I'm learning something so new, you know, every day while I'm here. And not just that, not like just meeting dentists and they are telling you about how to run the business aspect, how to be unique in your dental office, how to go about finances. They're teaching you all these things that sometimes a lot of us don't know, you know? It's like the behind the scenes, um, things that make a dental practice work. Also, dental students from every dental school are there. There's D4 and D3, which means there's different dental schools at each and you can honestly attend both if you um if you, if you get your dental um your pre-dental club to actually look into that there's an opportunity for you guys to go to the d4 or d3 conference my school at virginia tech was actually the only pre-dental club that was there all the rest of the people there were um students and actually in dental school and i was thinking wow like you know more dental, pre-dental students knew about this you would be exposed to so much and you can meet all these dental students from different schools they give you so much insight advice how they like it and you get you know real like raw like experiences from these people and you and it's not just one person it's like multiple people from each school and i think that was a huge help for me 100 percent. i like truly enjoyed those conferences and it was fun. Like when you go with your pre-dental club too, you know, they actually they have an event each time. They have like a, when I went, there was a water park because it was at a resort. And um, so along with everything dental, they had that. Um, 
they did a raffle. Like I won a free Oral B toothbrush. Um, they like you know it's more than just just like conferences, conferences, conferences. It's they like Im they implement you know a fun aspect to it. So you're truly enjoying you know like the dental field. You you're able to talk to these dentists, dental students. You're you're just exposed to so much, and I feel like it's very beneficial for anyone who wants to look into that. And Meharry is actually a D4 school. VCU is D4. I know um, UMD, which is in Maryland, that is a D3 school. So you can look into that and see, um, you know, which school you would, uh, you feel like you really want to go to. And you can actually, you know, go to that conference and meet those dental students. So I feel like when Corona is over and, you know, the world's opening back up again, that's definitely something everyone should look into. Perfect. Thank you so, so much for coming and talking to us about your experience in dental school and giving us advice about dental school. We truly learned a lot. For everyone watching, thank you so much for coming. Uh, there isn't going to be a quiz today, but I hope you guys learned a lot. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. I hope you guys have a great day. And if you have any questions about anything, ASDA or anything at all, let me know. And one more thing I wanted to add at the end is as to actually even, they give you a lot of opportunities. So they even have like magazines, like they have books that will tell you the stats of each dental school and what you what it takes to get into dental school. You know, it, it just, it's much more than even the conferences. It's a lot of advice and like key insight about how to get into dental school. So yeah, if you guys wanna look into that even more, they have those opportunities as well to get that mail to you or anything. Very, very cool. I'll surely be looking into that. Okay, <laughs> of course.